Hey students, welcome to Wooddale Students Online. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Micah. Hey, I'm Julie. And we are so excited because last week we had a ton of fun making our one night live video that we decided to do it every week, fifth through 12th grade. Yeah, and there's gonna be a mix of skits and games and messages and lots of fun. Yeah, and we figured you might not know us very well, so I'm gonna ask Julie a question, she's gonna ask me a question just to get to know each other a little bit better. So Julie, do you put your toothpaste, do you wet your toothbrush before or after you put the toothpaste on? Water first. Water first, okay, same. All right, uh, what's your favorite ice cream topping? Ooh, uh, none. I just like plain ice cream. I know, I know, it's crazy. Oh, hello, yeah. <laughs> what fun is that? All right. All right, thanks for joining us tonight, guys. We are gonna jump into a game. This is Ben. We are going to play a game of Would You Rather Quarantine Edition. We're going to put a series of Would You Rather questions up on the screen. And while Ben and I are discussing what we would rather choose, you guys be sure to put into the chat what you would choose for each question. At the end of it, we are going to give a digital Starbucks gift card to the person who puts the most insightful, most thoughtful answer into the chat. I'll hold on to this. Are you ready, Ben? I'm ready. <laughs> All right. Question number one. Would you rather be stuck in one room with your family for a week or or stuck in a room by yourself without your phone for a week. Wow, this is like this is quarantine edition for sure because this is kind of real. Exactly. Man, I'm a mama's boy, so I think I'd be stuck in, stuck in a room with my mom and okay. my brother and sister and you know them, but mostly. Mom, you know. Okay, cool. I, I have six younger siblings, so it'd be a lot of people to be in a room. So sure. I would probably go by myself in a room without my phone for a week. All right, next one. Would you rather be quarantined with Bigfoot or be quarantined with unicorns? <laughs> Both are very real. Absolutely. This is a very real would you rather question. 100%. Okay. Uh, you answer first. I answered first last time. Um, oh, I mean, it depends on if, it depends on the species of unicorn. Is it, a, is it an aggressive species? Or is it more of like a friendly, like a dolphin type spirit? Uh, I feel like I feel like Sasquatch's Bigfoot in general seems pretty scary, and I'd also be worried about the bathroom situation. Yeah, yeah that's fair. I guess that's probably my question too. Like, is what is the room like? Right. Because if the room is entertaining enough, I could be stuck in a room with Bigfoot or unicorns. Like, is there a playground? Right. Great question. Yes, I don't know. So I think Bigfoot. Okay, but you know, I'd want like an entertaining room. Absolutely. All right. Keep putting your answers in the chat. Next question. Would you rather watch your least favorite movie on replay for a week or not have internet for an entire week? <laughs> uh, not have internet for a whole week. Why? I don't know, because you can do most, well, no. Well, a lot of stuff I do is online right now. Okay. Do I have cellular data or just not Wi-Fi? It or just it says all... not have internet. So I would say not cellular data, not internet, nothing. No Wi-Fi, nothing. I personally would choose to not have internet because I cannot stand my least favorite movie. It was Twilight Eclipse. I had to leave the theater, it was so bad. <laughs> I couldn't do it for an entire week. Yeah, that's fair. So you keep praying about it. All right, next question. There is nothing normal left to drink. Would you rather drink a whole bottle of hot sauce or a whole bottle of blue cheese salad dressing? Oh, super lactose intolerant for me, hot sauce it is. Okay, and if I'm quarantined with you, I definitely don't want you <laughs> drinking or eating any of the blue super cheese dressing. Better. I honestly don't know what the nutrition facts are on hot sauce. Like, is it just high in sugar? What is it? Sugar? I, I don't know, like, what what you'd be getting nutritionally with it. Nothing. Okay, just consequences. Well, just stop. Okay, next question. All right, would you rather be stuck inside with video games but no bathroom, or be stuck outside with an outhouse but no video games? Truly neither. Right. It's truly neither. It depends on whether you chose to drink the salad dressing or the hot sauce. Yeah, that, yeah these would build on each other. I that see. would play a factor. Okay. Both are awful. Absolutely. You pick. 
Uh, I would rather go, I would rather take the outhouse because I'm not a huge video gamer. Yeah, I'm with you. Okay, cool, awesome. Thank you for playing <laughs> Would You Rather Quarantine Edition. We will announce the winner in the chat very soon and we'll be right back with an interview with one of our volunteers. <laughs> Well, thank you, Colin and Ben. Gives us a lot to think about and pray about over the next week. <laughs> hey, Jossie. Hello. Hey. Well, we love to hear what's going on in and around and through the lives of our people at Wooddale, our students, but also our volunteer staff. And that's exactly what Jossie Schirkenbach is. Jossie, say hello to everyone. Hello, everyone. <laughs> you probably have heard the name Schirkenbach before, because not only does Jossie volunteer with the 7th, 8th, and ninth grade ministry, her mom and dad are with the 5th and 6th grade ministry. <laughs> Big wood deal. Big deal. <laughs> and maybe if you don't know them from that, uh, her mom and her are kind of celebrities because during the Get Fit series in Big Church, they were two of the people who trained. With Yolanda. With Yo, who's a no Oh my goodness, it doesn't mm -hmm. stop. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm so glad that you're here with us. Thanks <laughs> Thank for taking you. the time. You know, we've been thinking about how many of you are experiencing your parent relationships in a different way these days. Um, Joss, even you're back at home, right? Mm -hmm. With mom and dad and your sister. Mm -hmm. So it just kind of begs the question, how you doing with your parents? <laughs> how are you doing in relationship to your mom or in relationship to your dad? My guess is things have changed or maybe intensified a little bit. So I'd love that to be our topic today, Jossie. So let's take a trip back to when you were a teenager. Mm -hmm. <laughs> how would you describe your relationship with your mom and dad? Um, if someone had told me now that I would have the relationship with my mom that I do, and I'd be in big church, and I'd be doing a Get Fit series with her, I wouldn't have believed them. Because I was someone when someone was like, my mom is my best friend. I was like, you're lying. Because mm -hmm. that wasn't my relationship with my mom. I felt like she was so strict. I felt like we just clashed on everything. And I never really spent time with my mom. And so now, as an adult, and I just want to spend time with my mom, like, I'm asking her to hang out with me, and she's <laughs> asking me to leave the room. And it's just a completely different relationship than it was 10 years ago. Hmm. So let's do this. Let's go back to those teenage years when the relationship wasn't great. Um, what did you bring to the relationship, Jossie? Because I, you know, so often we say, oh, it's this person's fault and they did this, mm -hmm. this, and this. And I like to ask, like, what was your percentage? Like, what did you bring to it? So as a 15-year-old, 17-year-old girl, what did you bring to the relationship? <laughs> Not a whole lot. <laughs> um, I remember being in junior high and listening to one of your sermons. Mm -hmm. And you had talked about a scuba diving tank and oh, yeah. how you were, when you give so much to your friends and your people you see at school or whatever else, and then when you're at home, you give your family whatever's left. Mm -hmm. And it's not a whole lot. I'm a people pleaser, so I like to give everyone all my energy at once. And then I'm tired when I'm home yeah. and I need a break from people. And so I'm mean to my family. I'm not, then I'm not nice to them and I'm not happy-go-lucky Jossie that the rest of the world gets hmm. to see. So I think that that was a lot of what I was in junior high. Hmm. Like, I was concerned with only my friends or the people that saw me outside of the home. Yeah. And so I didn't give my mom, especially, the best sides of me. Hmm. So what do you think was the turning point? It might not have been like a specific situation, but what season of life were you just like, you know what, this is not right. Like, I want more than this. I think it was very gradual, okay. but I think um, when I went to Project Colorado, my mom had been my Sunday school teacher mm -hmm. every year of my life, mm -hmm. all the way to junior <laughs> high, which is super cute now, but at the time I was not cute. And she had followed me, so a lot of the kids in my Sunday school class she had also followed. So I went to junior high with them. I was in AUG with them. So 
during Faith Stories on Project Colorado, my mom was brought up so many times. Mm -hmm. And that was a big moment for me to realize I mean, I've, I've been annoyed with her. I've not been seeing her in her best light. And all these kids are going up here and they're saying, you know, someone who first told me about Jesus or helped me accept Jesus into my heart yeah. was your mom, yeah. Miss Shelley. And that really was like, I need to appreciate her for who she is mm-hmm. and not who I'm seeing her to be. Mm-hmm. So you literally saw her through the eyes of other people. Mm -hmm. Your friends thought your mom was amazing. Yes. (laughs) Which is common. They're like, she's so full of energy and she's so fun. And I'm like, "Uh (laughs) (laughs) uh-huh. So if you could give yourself advice, uh, but really also talking to our students tonight, um, what what would you tell them? How how can they help their relationship with their parent to not be miserable, Mm -hmm. but to be really good instead? Um, I think I'd say take it one step at a time. Mm -hmm. I think if I had said, I'm going to be best friends with my mom and just wanted to go and hang out with her, it wouldn't have worked. Mm -hmm. Because being a parent to me as when I was 15, it's new for them. I have an older sister, but we're completely different Mm -hmm. people. So when I was excited to go to prom, she wasn't. When I wanted to shop for a dress six months in advance, (laughs) she didn't. And so they're going through it for the first time too. So just taking it one step at a time and telling them something you're excited about or something that you found funny. And maybe they'll respond to it in a positive way, maybe they won't, but they're not gonna continue to point that time in if you don't try. Yeah. What about specifically during this time where we're isolated together? How would you advise kids who are kind of going a little crazy? It's easy to go crazy, (laughs) for sure. Um, I think that this time is kind of a blessing Mm -hmm. in a weird way because you don't have the option to go see your friends. So it's like where I struggled so much with prioritizing my family. I mean, your options are to hang out with your family or to like hang out with your cell phone. So making time for your family saying like let's play dominoes or (laughs) cards or something and like just kind of having that be a element of your night you don't have to spend the whole time with them but that's a great way to start that conversation and start building a relationship even if there isn't one there yeah so it might not be you saying that you regret that your relationship was the way that it was but if you could go back you change it oh yeah i missed out on time with my mom that I could have had that I'm so grateful for that I have now, but man, it would have been fun to be a teenager and have Miss Shelley be my mom. (laughs) (laughs) I love it. Thanks, Jess. Thank Thank you. you. Students, we know that this is a unique and a different time and that there has been extra strain on your relationship with your parents, but here's what we do know. Your parents love you and they are doing their best. And I agree with Jossie. We agree with Jossie. Use this time to discover how amazing your parents are and to invest a little bit more time while you have it in your relationship with them. We think that you won't be disappointed. So thanks, Joss, for being with us. Thank you. (laughs) Have a great rest of your time.
sixth grade pastor and uh, we are heading into a little series on the wisdom that God provides for us. So let me start with a question. When I say the word reputation, what do you think of? Take a second, think about it, put your answer in the chat below, but what do you think of when I say the word reputation? All right, now let's be honest. How many of you said a Taylor Swift album? Taylor Swift had an album that came out a little while ago called Reputation. 
and we're going to talk about that in just a second. But first, I think we need to define what does reputation mean? And I think it's really important that we listen to the words and the differences of what reputation can mean. You see, reputation is who people know you to be. Now think about that. I didn't say who people think you are. I said who people know you to be. Taylor Swift, when asked why she named her album Reputation, gave this as one of her answers. What if my reputation kept someone from wanting to get to know me? What does your reputation say about you? What does your reputation say who you are? Who do people know you to be? Is it someone who gets in trouble all the time? Is it someone maybe who doesn't live such a good life? Is it someone who hangs out with someone from the opposite sex all the time? What does your reputation say about you? Who do people know you to be? You see, our reputation can affect not only the now, but can, it can affect our future. Our reputation is not just about who we are right now, who we are in this, in this time, or who we are at school, but it's a lot about who we are when we get older, who we are when we have a job, who we are when we go to college. And some of us think for so long that we can have a good start, start over, a do-over, right? For, for you seniors, you're, you're going to head off to college next year, and you think that you get a do-over and you can build a new reputation, and that's true. But who do people here think you are? Who do people here know you are? And that's really important. And you see, we, we talk about wisdom, and when we think about wisdom, we look at the book of Proverbs. And the book of Proverbs is simply a book with a lot of little sayings. A lot of sayings of wise things that we can do in our life to help build us up. Little sayings that are way better than any fortune cookie you'll ever get. And Proverbs 22.1 says, A good name is more desirable than great riches. To be esteemed is better than silver or gold. That's Proverbs 22.1. You see, it says, who we are, what, that, well, that our good name is more desirable than great riches. You can have all the money in the world, but if your reputation is bad, nobody's going to care. You can have all the money in the world, but if your reputation is poor, that might keep somebody from wanting to get to know who you are. And so I think it's very important that when the Bible says that it's more about who you are than what you have. And we live in a society that, that says, hey, he who dies with the most toys wins. He who has the most things wins. You go on TikTok and you see things like rich kid check. And they show you all the things that they have, the cars they have, the pools in their backyard. But it's not about that if they're not a nice person to begin with. You see, our reputation needs to be that of someone who is good. Our reputation needs to be that of someone who loves God. And our reputation needs to let people know who we are. But sometimes I think we get it confused. And we get it confused in allowing people what people think we are to drive who we think we are. And that doesn't have to be our reputation. So what do we do? Where do we go from here? I think we need to allow the word of God to determine what our reputation is. 
The word of God should determine our reputation and how the world sees us. And so we should be looking at things like the Version Bible app in our Bible plans. We should be studying the church at home stuff. And we should be discovering how the Bible says that we should live. Not for fame, not for fortune, but so that we are established in a godly life that allows us to have a good reputation. You see, we need to be grounded in the word of God. Second, don't let what people think about you determine who you are. You see, people can think something about you and it can be proven wrong. You know, if somebody were to come up and say, I think that uh, Tarman did this. But if I have a group of friends who actually knows me and knows who I am, they're able to stand up and say, that doesn't even sound like him. That doesn't sound like anything he would do. We know him. Don't let the thoughts of somebody else determine who you are. Allow your reputation and how people know you to be to drive that. I saw a great quote this morning from a pastor in South Carolina. And it says this, what you allow to take root will eventually take up residence. Refuse to let a lie live in your mind. Don't invite, evict it. The lie may come in, but you can kick it out. And what a great quote that is. Because that's how we can kick those lies out of our minds. That's how we cannot live by what people think of us. We hold them captive, the Bible says, and we kick them out. We evict the lies that people think about us. But the hardest part about this is you got to not care what people think. Because you got to want to know what they know. Or they got to want to know what, who you are. Sorry. But you got to not care what others think. Which means if you're in a situation and you know that it's not right and you don't want the reputation that you're going to be at a certain party or you're going to be doing a certain thing, then you need to be willing to say no and not care what people think about you to say no. And you need to understand that your reputation matters. Not only for the now, but for the future. And that brings us to point three. Be focused on the long term of reputation. What I do now has consequences later on. And those consequences can affect many areas of our lives. So let your reputation, let who you are now, determine how you will see, be seen in the future. Keep your eyes focused on who God wants you to be, how God wants you to grow. John 16, 30, 33 says, I've told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. You see, Jesus is talking there and he says, it's not that you're going to have an easy life. If you choose my road, if you choose my plan, if you choose to live by the Bible, if you choose to build your reputation on what I say, it doesn't guarantee that it's going to be easy. In fact, it's not. You're going to have to make those hard choices. But you have to determine that your reputation is important. And that you want to build that reputation on God. You see, our reputation is more about what people know about us instead of what people think about us. And our reputation matters, not only now, but in the future as well. Pray with me. Heavenly Father, thank you for who you are and thank you that you give us instruction on how you want us to live. And Lord, let us not lean into what people think about us, but Father, let us lean into what people know about us. 
and let us live a life that allow people to know that we love you, that we love those around us, and that we want to live by your standards. Father, we know our reputation matters not only for today, but in the future. We love you and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh, that was a powerful message. It's so great for us to think about our reputation and, you know, not hearing those voices and not believing those voices. Yeah, and we'd love to talk about this a little bit more, so we invite you to join one of our breakout groups. And so you'll see this coming up on the screen. Uh, you can join in with us. Yeah, we'd love to get to know you. We know it's going to be a big step for some of you to join a group, but we'd love to connect with you and dig deeper into this week's message. Yeah, so, and then we'll see you again next week, 6.30, Wednesday. All right, like and subscribe.